Hello and welcome to Tech Lightning. As an Azure architect, you need to have a lot of knowledge spanning multiple technical areas. Not only do you need to know all these technical areas, but you also need to have a very good business acumen. So stay tuned in this video where I arm you with some specific knowledge in key areas of Azure. Here we go. You need to leverage the strength of the specific cloud providers. A few key areas which Azure excels in are AM, Identity and Access Management, specifically the integration with the on-premise Active Directory. Analytics and related components such as AI and ML, Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning. Integration with Office 365, also known as Microsoft 365 and their products. There is very aggressive investment for sales and support by Microsoft. They are very eager to get the business, which you can use to your advantage to negotiate deals, support, training, and whatever you need. Pricing for services. As an architect, there are some key points you need to know about pricing in Azure. Ingress traffic, that's the incoming traffic. Ingress traffic to the first hub in Azure is free. Traffic between virtual networks, also known as VNets in Azure, always has a cost depending on the amount of traffic going through. Now that's valid for both ingress and egress traffic. Low spec virtual machines can be had for about 30 euros a month. They can be interesting for non-critical workloads. Of course, these virtual machines, they can scale up along with the price to meet most of the requirements. Azure Firewall is expensive and you should count at least 700 euros a month for the standard SKU. So keep that in mind. Azure database pricing has to be done carefully. Uh, a lot of options to consider, a lot of possibilities. One key point I always take with me is Microsoft SQL is about two to two and a half times more expensive than PostgreSQL. Azure Functions they provide very interesting free options, specifically if it's not for critical workloads that you can leverage. Many components, they feature a linear cost model where you pay for the amount of data processing that you either use or store. Storage accounts, Azure Monitor and Log Analytics, along with Azure Defender. Though for Azure Defender, it's a price per node and you pay for additional storage costs depending on how much it looks. Connectivity to Azure. The general focus here are on two options. The VPN, site to site, and the express route. Some companies, they start with a VPN and then add an express route as their cloud presence grows. It's also possible to have an express route with a VPN as a secondary option. The main difference between those is that an express route is a dedicated line to Azure, whereas VPN leverages the public internet. That means that with an express route, you can deliver an end-to-end -end SLA. VPN cannot provide this as the traffic goes through the public internet. Securing workloads. Never allow direct access to any workloads in the cloud. Let's say you want to make an SFTP server available in Azure. Now you can open up access directly from the internet to this server, but that is never a good practice. Either safeguard it with a next generation firewall, or in case of a web server, put an application gateway there with WAF, the web application firewall functionality. Migrating to Azure. Try to avoid services which are depending on IAAS, Infrastructure as a Service. That means virtual machines and any approach to just doing a lift and shift from on-premise or the private data center into Azure. Usually it's not much cheaper and can even be more expensive in some cases if you do the migration that way to the cloud. So use PaaS services, Platform as a Service, wherever possible especially for database services. For applications running in a private data center, try to containerize them using Docker. See how they fit in the app service within Azure. 
Key takeaway here is focus on making the applications and workloads cloud aware and even cloud native. There you have it. Very useful information, short, concise, to the point. I hope it will be useful for you and that you can use it in some of your meetings and discussions. Until next time, good luck and see you.